Hello learners, my name is Mayur Bagarwal, Assistant Professor at Uttarakhand Open University. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss perfect competition, demand and supply analysis including impact of tax and subsidies. Under this, we are going to discuss the meaning of perfect competition, perfect elastic demand curve and equilibrium of the firm under perfect competition under short run and long run. And at last, we will discuss the role of government intervention in perfect competition. That is the impact of tax and subsidies on perfect competition. Let us start with the definition or meaning of perfect competition. Perfect competition describes a market structure where competition is at its greatest possible level. To make it more clear, a market which exhibits the following characteristics in its structure is said to follow perfect competition. The points are, there are large number of firms producing and selling a product. The product of all the firms are homogeneous. Both seller and buyer have perfect information about prevailing price in the market. And at last, entry and the exit of the firm in an industry is free. So let us discuss all these points in detail. The first point is large number of firms. The first condition of perfect competition is that there are large number of firms in the industry. The existence of large number of firms producing and selling the product ensures that the individual firm does not influence over the price of the product. The output of an individual firm continuously very small portion of the total output of the whole industry so that any industry or so any increase or decrease in output by the individual firm has negligible effect on the total supply of the product under the industry as a result a single firm is not a position to influence the price of the product by increasing or decreasing of its output the individual firm under perfect competition therefore take the price of the product and adjust its output to earn maximum profit. In other words, we can say that under perfect competition, a single firm is price taker and adjust its output as per the market demand. The second point of perfect competition is homogeneous product. The second condition of perfect com uh, competition is the product produced by all the firm in the industry are fully homogeneous and identical. They are perfect substitute of one another. In other words, cross elasticity between the product of the firm is infinite. In case of homogeneous product, trademarks, patent, special brands, labels, etc. are not exist since these things make the product differentiated. It should, it should be noted that if there may be, there are many firms, but they are producing differentiated product, each one of the firm will have influence over the price of its own validity of the product. The control of the price is completely eliminated only when the firm are producing homogeneous product. Another condition for the perfect competition is that both the buyers and sellers are fully aware of the ruling price in the market because only when all buyers know fully the current price of the product in the market, sellers cannot charge more than the prevailing price in the market. If any seller tries to charge higher price than the prevailing price in the market, then the buyer will shift to some other sellers and buy the goods at the prevailing price since they know what the ruling price in the market is. Similarly, the seller also aware of the prevailing price in the market. So no one will charge lesser price in the market. Lastly, the perfect competition requires that there must be complete freedom of entry of new firms or the exist of existing firm from the industry in the long run. Therefore, there must be no barrier for the en entry of the firms since in the short run, firms cannot enter. In the short run, firms cannot neither change their size of their plant nor firm can enter or old firm can leave the industry. The condition 
the condition of free entry and free exit therefore apply only to the long run equilibrium under perfect competition if the existing firm are making super normal profit in short run this will attract more firm in the industry which will definitely decrease the price of the product on the other on the other hand if a firm is making loss in the short run this will existing firms and uh, in the long run the price will go up and this will becomes uh, this will makes the industry to earn profit in the long run now let us discuss the perfectly elastic demand curve the demand curve or average revenue curve facing by an additional firm under perfect competition is perfectly elastic at the existing price of the market perfectly elastic demand curve signifies that the firm does not exercise any control over the price of the product but can sell any amount of the product as it like at the prevailing price if the firm raises its price slightly above the prevailing price it will lose all its customer to the rivals because it can sell as much as it can it like at the prevailing price it has no incentive to low it therefore being able to raise the price and having no in incentive to low it the firm is contrast it to accept the ruling price in the market once the price in the market is established the firm accept as a given price and adjusts its output at the level which gives its maximum profit let us discuss with the help of one diagram or chart as this chart shows to the beginning with demand curve dd and supply curve ss intersect at point e and determine price op now the firm have no influence over the price will take the price op as given and therefore average revenue average marginal revenue curve facing it will be horizontal straight line at the level of op you can see in the diagram also that when demand curve d is intersecting supply curve e under perfect competition average revenue and marginal revenue are parallel to the y axis let us discuss the equilibrium of firm under perfect competition as explained earlier under perfect competition an individual firm is a price taker that is it has to accept the prevailing price as a given industry it cannot influence the price by its individual action as a result demand curve of average revenue curve of a firm is horizontal straight line that is perfectly elastic at the level of prevailing price since perfectly competitive firm sell additional unit of output at the same price marginal revenue curve coincide with the average revenue curve marginal curve as usual is u same now in order to decide about the equilibrium output the firm will compare marginal cost with marginal revenue it will be in equilibrium at the level at it will be at equilibrium at the level of output at which marginal cost equals marginal revenue and marginal cost curve is cutting marginal revenue curve from below at the level of with the maximum at this level it will be maximum its it will maximize its profit since marginal revenue is the same as price or average revenue under perfect competition as we can see in the graph that average revenue and marginal revenue is parallel to the y axis in the perfect competition and under perfect competition marginal marginal cost cuts marginal revenue from below and when marginal revenue and average revenue average cost is great average revenue the average cost is lower than marginal cost there there should be super normal profit in this condition this uh, industry will attract more firm in the long run which will which will uh, downsize the price of the market and which will increase the supply of goods in the market and 
in the long run average revenue and marginal revenue cuts average costs uh, from uh, at the tangent point and marginal cost cut it from below you can see in this diagram also that marginal cost marginal revenue average revenue and marginal cost are parallel or equal in long run when in in this condition as we can see that when uh, uh, most of the firms uh, in long run will look, uh, lose their confidence and uh, when most of the firm will left the organization or left the industry again they will have a loss in the long run this will condition will bring again the uh, firm to the uh, uh, average revenue and marginal uh, revenue in the equilibrium only when average cost is tangent to the average revenue we can see in the long run that marginal revenue is tangent to the average revenue curve in the long run we can see this in the long run also as we all know that average revenue and average cost are uh, parallel or tangent or parallel to the y axis and average revenue average cost is tangent to the marginal revenue and marginal cost cuts marginal revenue from below let us discuss the role of government intervention in perfect competition that is the impact of tax and subsidies in perfect competition we will discuss the role of tax in two ways that is in lump sum and per unit tax lump sum means that lump sum tax is a tax of fixed amount that all firm have to pay without considering their level of output here it means that organization or the government will uh, introduce lump sum tax to the entire firm or entire industry without considering their level of output but when we are talking about per unit tax we means that the level of output will be considered while applying the level of tax with the help of the following conditions will be appear when we are considering tax at lump sum when tax is imposed cost curve will shift upward and supply curve will shift leftward and lump sum tax will shift curve upward increase in tax will reflect in price first graph the first graph shows the condition of market without tax implementation second graph shows the condition of firm after implementation of tax third graph shows what happens to the market after imposition of tax and the fourth graph shows what happens to the firm after imposition of tax as we can see in this graph that when there is no tax being implemented by government we have normal uh, perfect competition at point at this point okay when government introduce tax then suddenly the price goes up that is average cost curve goes upward that includes the cost plus tax at in the same at the at normal price we can know that average revenue and marginal revenue are parallel to the y axis when tax is being imp uh, implemented suddenly the price goes up to this level and what happens to the market the uh, with the increase in the price supply curve shift to the left as we have discussed in earlier also that the market's uh, shift curve uh, the supply curve shift to the leftward and in the long run the price goes up we can compare it with this level that in earlier condition when tax is not implemented in the market the price is prevailing here with the q1 quantity when tax is being implemented in the market the supply is decreased from q1 to the q2 Uh, at this point and in the long run the price has been shifted to the this point where mr and 
marginal revenue and average revenue is tangent to the average cost. Now let us see the impact of subsidies over industry and firm. When subsidy is not being given by the government, then we can see that the perfect competition is uh, at the point E. Suppose that this is point E, where demand curve and supply curve is intersecting at point E and we are having price P1 and demand D1 as the as government implemented the supply uh, subsidy in the market suddenly the cost of the firm has gone decreases which will increase or which will implement the super normal profit in the short run and in long run uh, this will attract more industry to the organization or industry which will shift supply curve to the right world and in with increasing the supply in the market this will attract more firm in the organization and in the long run the prices also the normal super normal profit will be uh, gone to the normal profit as here in this condition more of the firms are being attracted by the industry so we can say that imposition of tax and subsidies imposition of tax uh, will initially lead to losses and then supply of commodity will be decreases as a result of as a result price of uh, price of decrease in price will decrease and uh, prices will be decreased because of uh, decrease in the supply uh, and ultimately in the long run this will uh, decrease the uh, number of firm in the organization and with decrease in firm and increase in prices again the firm will earn normal profit on the uh, on the contrary when supply is being or when on the contrary when subsidy is being provided by the government in the short run usually the profits are being generated uh, generating uh, abnormal profit in the short run this will attract more uh, firms uh, in the long run which will suddenly increase the supply of product in the market this will again decrease the super normal profit to the normal profit so we can say that the effect of tax and subsidies will be on price and firm are earning only normal profit in the long run now let us consider the impact of per unit tax uh, and per, per unit subsidies on perfect competition perfect com uh, per unit tax is a tax on which unit of output produced per unit tax will be increased firms variable cost and marginal cost per unit tax will affect marginal cost variable cost and average cost equilibrium point will be affected some firm will have to share some firm have to suffer losses in short run some firm will have to leave the industry ultimately there will be a normal profit in the no, uh, long run in the same way when subsidy is being provided by per unit per unit uh, then the average it will affect the average revenue cost marginal cost and average total cost per unit subsidy is the subsidy given to each unit of output equilibrium point will be affected some firm will enjoy abnormal profit in short run this will attract more firms in the long run which will again brings the industry to the normal profit so in conclusion we can say that tax and subsidy will ultimately affect the price of the commodity and this price is been ultimately been uh, bear by the customer and there is no effect of price in the long run and in, in contrary the subsidy will decrease the price but uh, this will also increase the number of firms in the uh, long run so this will also decrease the super normal profit to the normal profit that's it for today's lecture thank you